Approximately one year ago today, I made the announcement that the internet has hit a new low. So what happens when you hit a brand new low? Of course, you keep digging. It's the one year anniversary special of the Mike Sasson Show live on the River's Edge. You could be listening to us right now on www.riversedgepgh.com or you could be watching us on Facebook Live or you could be listening to us also on TuneIn Radio on the TuneIn Radio app or after the fact you could be listening to us on iTunes, SoundCloud or Google Play. My name is Mike Sasson. Over there is producer extraordinaire Alex Clemens. What up? We are again live at beautiful Mr. Small's Theater, the Mr. Small Studio, here again in beautiful Millvale, Pennsylvania. It's our third show here at the extraordinary, the large, the air-conditioned, the cool, the well-lit Mr. Small's Theater. On today's show, we're going to be discussing uh, the origins of the Mike Sasson Show, what we plan on do doing moving forward with the Mike Sasson Show. Also, as I mentioned before, Alex is going to be talking about the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. It was last week. I hate the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Alex thought she could possibly get some sort of joy out of it by looking at the butts of the players. Did she enjoy the butts? Did I don't I? know. Oh, Did she? We'll never know. That's it. Well, we'll, we'll know eventually, right? Because you'll tell us. Maybe. Ah, see, maybe she won't even talk about it. That's the kind of producer extraordinaire she is. Also, we're going to be talking about my five top takes. Also, bar thoughts and experiences. Plus, Kid Rock's going to run for the Senate. What? Why? Why? Because it's American. Who gives a shit anymore? But again, it's the first year anniversary. Now, just so you get like a, a snapshot of what it's like to do this show, I'm, th I'm sitting here in my, in my, my chair right here, and... Really, I believe that this show is unique because, yes, we are recording an internet radio show that eventually becomes a podcast, all that other kind of good stuff. But one thing that I think is unique about this show, if someone came up to me and said, Mike, what is the one thing before a show that is the thing that you work on the most? And really, weirdly, it's the lighting. This is the only internet radio show that spends more time on lighting the darn thing than audio-wise. It's incredible. Like, during the entire thing, I'm sitting here doing a show. Brian the Godfather is here. He sleeps here. I think this is his new apartment. I think he'd kind of ditch the old one, and he's just going to chill here, which actually is pretty smart because this is a nice place. And we're like, it's like, how does Mike look here? How does Mike look here? And the thing about it is I like it because it makes me feel very special. It makes me feel like, you know, like I'm a movie star. Like I'm some sort of, like, oh, what's the best way to light Mike? What's the best way to make sure that Mike doesn't look like, you know, a partially shaved baboon? What could we possibly do to make him tolerable for people to look at him for the next hour? And so Alex and Brian then go to work, and that's where the magic happens when you're looking at me right here. So also, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you notice that Alex has a new hair color. How, how long did it's the last... It's not as easy to flip it around with these headphones on. Okay, well, take off the headphones, because I don't think people want to hear see the hair flip. There you go. Was that beautiful? That was beautiful. What color would you say this hair is now? Um, 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 <laughs> I don't know. I would describe I like it, to as call a... it as a mermaid pink purple. Okay, I would say, I was going to say pink purple. Mermaid pink purple. Mermaid pink purple. It's a very specific type of pink purple. So you went into like the, the store and you said, hmm, where is mermaid pink purple hair dye? Yes. Okay. Where no, I you... bought it online. You buy it online. Is that where you mostly get your dyes? No, not usually. Oh, okay. Usually I buy them in store so I can see it in person. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't do that. Okay. I was drunk and decided to buy some hair dye. There you go. So like most people get drunk and they go and they buy weird stuff online. You buy new hair color. Yeah. There you go. Now, and so th th was this a decision over the weekend or is this something like, last hey, it's Wednesday. last Wednesday, you just decided for the first anniversary show, you're just going to come out pink, purple, mermaid, yeah, aerial figured, look. Yeah, you know, I want to look a little bit different this year going forward. Absolutely. I do as well. I mean, as you can see. So different. So different. Did you see Mike's new hair color? Yeah. It's a, a, a little bit darker of a shade of soft black. Yeah. With a, yeah. It's softer black. It's, it's softer black. And then also, I obviously got a new black T-shirt, and you know, <laughs> so looks so much different. I know than it looks ones. so much different than I would. Seriously, if you just did a chronological picture of every show, it would just basically be like 
sweaty beard, sweaty beard, less sweaty beard, no more beard, but sweaty. Now beard is back. Now we're at one year. That's basically the entire year. Yeah. That's one year of Slow Mike's looks. Slow progression. We're a little bit less sweaty Mike now, which is very nice for me. If you, you have no idea. One of the most exciting things. I love the old studio. I will always feel a kinship to the old studio and always feel a kinship to the Millville Studios. But one thing that I despised about that was, especially on hot July, August, September days, <laughs> It was in, it was insanely warm. Yes. Like I would walk in and just be like, okay, this is going to be rough. This is going to, I mean, and I look at some of those pictures and I am just drenched in sweat, which actually the funny thing about it was it really affected it in a different, it didn't negatively affect the show, but by the end yeah. of the show, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how much people really like watching you like, oh. But it know, really, while I, I'm talking, you're just over there like wiping all the sweat off your face. But I think at the end of the show, I was just so pissed off at life. It had to be very like entertaining, just being going, "Oh God, just ah, screw this just guy, get out of here. just kill everybody in the world and just start over." Like that would be one of my five takes. The worst thing about it was get, going from the studio, and then you go outside of our studio, and you're like, "Oh, okay, this is nice." And then you go actually outside into the real world, and like into your hot steaming car, and it's like, "This is no better." Yeah, I'm just gonna be sad for the rest of the day. But one thing that also I'm noticing is like today. Uh, I came from the studio, and just so you know, Alex doesn't like me here that early. No. She wants to have her work done without me around, without me staring and saying, oh, you doing, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? What are you doing now? So I kind of you know, make sure that I stroll in around 8.30. And so I, I, st I stop at the studio. I go, you know, it's a little early. Let me go get a cup of coffee. And so I go down into Millvale. Because if you've ever been to Millvale, Mr. Small Studio is on top of the hill. So I think that that's kind of like symbolic. I felt like almost like, oh, the old studio was like in the valley where we were like in the, you know, we, we were gritty and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now we're on top of the world. Now we just look down on everything. And so it's, it's just a different kind of, uh, different kind of setting and different kind of world. But again, we love it. We love it being here. Now, before we start out, I did send Alex five questions a couple days ago that we're going to go over, just kind of review the first year. It's kind of like a performance review. Like you work for a big company and you have to like take a performance review. This is basically the performance review for this show moving forward. But one thing just really kind of annoyed the hell out of me this morning. Um, so in the background, I have TV as I'm getting ready, as I'm getting pampered, as I have my personal assistant make sure that, you know, my black T-shirt is laid out and my jeans and everything like that. Because, you know, I can't pick out this by myself. It's important that I have this, all that kind of good stuff. So I have the TV in the background, and it's, it's one of those, like, morning shows with the 15 different people, and they're just talking about nothing in the world. And... The one thing that struck me was there was this, this story about the prince and princess of Wales, you know, that over in England, and they're all sitting there talking, and um, I guess someone gave Kate Middleton, like, a present, because that's all they go. They go to places, and then people give them stuff. That's, like, their life. Okay. It's a really tough life. So someone gives them something, and it's a toy or, like, a, a, a thing that's supposed to, like, help newborn babies. And so the story was, is like, <laughs> then Kate Middleton uh, was recorded as saying, well, I guess we're, so, I guess we're going to have to have some more babies. <laughs> is that a hint that maybe she's pregnant and all this other kind of stuff? Do they really talk like that? They absolutely did talk like that. To me, that's how every annoying person on television and radio talks. One thing that bothers me about television and radio personalities is they can't just be real. They just can't talk. They have to have this deep voice, and they have to, and all the ladies have to just think everything in the I, world I is hilarious. I have never heard anyone talk you, like that. I, it, on, constantly. No. Constantly. They don't I talk like real people. I can see a deep people. voice, but not that. Yes. It's cartoony. They, they talk that. In my mind, they do. Mm, okay. In my uh, depressed mind, they do. Anyways, one of the uh, women on the show, and by the way, there's like 37 people on these shows now. Yeah. There's, that's, that's the new thing. There's one thing that Barbara Walters did when she did, came with The View is essentially she started the, the whole process of, you know what, just have 97 people on a TV show Because at once. one person just isn't good enough. Like, they're not talented enough to have their own complete show. One thing that I've said is, like, yeah, if you're on a television show 
and there's there's five people at the table, you, you, you're a, you're a pretty shitty broadcaster. Yeah. If you if you if you, if you want to go up to a, con, in a in a contract negotiation and believe that you should get paid more when there's six people at the table, the person's gonna laugh their way out of this. Dude. They're gonna laugh you out of the boardroom. They're gonna go get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That leave that be the laugh. That be the polite <laughs> laugh. If there's 77 people at the thing. So one of the 77 people on this show sits there and goes, <laughs> well, they already have two children. So they've got their hands full. With two children. Well, the thing is, they're the, they're the prince and princess of Wales. They're in no way taking care of this kid. They don't even know the kids. Aww. They're doing nothing. Okay? If, 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 if like a normal mother who works at Walmart or something like that had a couple kids, yeah, she's got her hands full and a third kid or a fourth kid or whatever would be an issue. But when you're the prince and princess of Wales, you have 97 servants. They could have 62 kids. Kate Middleton, honestly, if she was doing her job, would have 77 kids to make sure that, you know, ultimately there would be always an heir and a spare. That's what they And a really good one. And a really good one. Yeah. And then obviously just keep having them until one of them is good looking. You know, and so the problem I have is like this idea, <laughs> you know, they, they, they've got their hands full. That's such an insult to actual parents. That's such an insult to people like, <laughs> you know, that life must be tough at Buckingham Palace. Are you, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you just literally kidding me that you would say that? And the other problem is, is like, okay, why are we even talking about these people? You should really not watch morning news. I, I feel I, like it does not do your life well. I despise the morning news shows. Well, then don't watch it. But they're always on. There's like 97 of them. And the other thing about it is when I was a kid, the Today Show and Good Morning America had two people on them. They had a man and a woman. Yes. Okay? They started the at quality. 7. They started at 7. They ended at 9. Okay, that's when the show, it, 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 today's show started at 7 and it ended at 9. Goodbye, go on with the rest of your day. Here comes card sharks. Here comes let's make a deal. That'd be the thing. Now the today's show, I believe NBC now has the Today show on from 4 in the morning until about 5 p.m. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, the, there's now like an afternoon today show. There's like a today show, like for, for the middle show. There's like an internet today show. There's like, it's mostly NBC is now the today show. Get ready for your day. It, it's, it's over. I'm done. I'm, I'm home from work. You're still on. Go away. Put something else on. What the hell is this? Okay. Can I read some of our comments? Well, just one of them. Okay. Read comments. By the way, comment again on Facebook Live if you're listening. And uh, comment on Alex's beautiful hair. Comment on my beautiful hair. How about that? How about that? Make me feel good for once. This is something for you. Okay, good. And us. You both look great. Oh, sorry. This is from Garrett Teitelbaum. Thank you, Garrett. Uh, you both look great. Congrats on the first year anniversary. Looking forward to many more. Thank you, Garrett. Garrett sounds a like a Hallmark card. He's a sweetheart. I, I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Hallmark card. I'm going to give him a hug. Maybe he should start uh, working for them. He should. He should make big time bank working for them. Yeah. Garrett should, you know, get into I'd, that. I'd like that as a card. Get, getting, them, getting them in the, by the way, uh, anyone want to send us a card? Thank you. Ungrateful sons of bitches. I Anyways, where like the balloons and stuff. <laughs> Seriously, we get nothing in this world. Okay, yeah, but nothing. Nothing. Come, we give you free. Things. Seriously, it's free. Like sometimes I make fun where I sit there and I go, "Hey, if you don't like the show, we'll give you double your money back." Guess what? It's free. That's the whole point. What else in this world is free that's this good? So give us presents. Yes, give us things. Life shouldn't be this free. Anyways, moving forward, as I mentioned before. Um, After, or before your before mom. my diatribe on morning rate. Yeah. God, I hate morning television. Okay. Ugh. But we're done with that now. Okay, good. Now we're past. Okay. Well, I sent Alex five questions, where I sat there and we we so we could go over the first year. Uh, last year we had our first show on July nineteenth. Right now it's July eighteenth. So approximately the first year of shows, and a lot of stuff happened. So we just kind of want to review. As I mentioned before, it's kind of like a performance review. So here are the five questions that I came up with. I don't know what Alex is going to say. Which, by the way, if you a little insight in the show, I have no idea what Alex is going to say. I have no idea. And, and to be honest with you, Alex has very little knowledge of what I'm about to say. This show really is produced poorly. Anyways. Because we love surprises. We love surprises. That's why. There you Not go. Not because it's produced poorly. Okay. Number one question, Alex. You ready? Uh, yes, I have them written down. Oh, okay. You were very, I didn't have anything written down. I go off I'm the cuff. I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. <laughs> First question. Why'd you do the show? 
Uh, because you asked me. Okay. <laughs> I said, this is my answer. Because you asked, you believed in me, and I thought it would be a good way to do something with my degree. Okay. Just to, okay, my, that was, uh, by Beautiful the way, these answer. are really going to be like Miss Pennsylvania kind of deal. And I want you to, yeah, I want you to answer the questions as if you're running for Miss Mike Sasson show. But <laughs> Did um, I have a good wave? That was an amazing wave. I know. Were you taught? I mean, your sister was in pageants, right? Just one. Just one. But I mean, like, did you ever get, like, did she ever give you any of the training to, like, make sure that you were pageant ready at any point? Yeah, she had a ton of training. So she. Really? Uh, no. Okay. So, but I mean, I, there, there has to be, like, there's, like, pageant coaches who, like, it's like SAT coaches. They, like, yeah. make big time bank doing that. I mean, dancing kind of helps. Okay. You know? But I mean, like, I think we should, I think we should do, both do pageant. Let's do a coaching. pageant. Let's do a pageant. That. All right, write that down before the end of the year. We're going to uh, we're going to have Mr. and Mrs. Mike Sasson show. Aw. There you go. They don't have to be married either. And then they dance at the end. Then they dance at the end Just and then like we prom king and then yeah, and then they get married. And then we divorce them. And then they have to <laughs> then they have to tell about how their lives are terrible. This is a lot. It's going to be a wonderful. It's going to be like our Christmas special. Okay, why did I do the show? Um, after the Q929 thing, uh, I was wondering what the heck I should do. Some people said, you know, hey, move to New York or L.A., start doing stand-up, start doing the road, all this kind of stuff. So uh, I got an opportunity to be on Funny Money with, uh, with Tom Henry, and Brian was uh, the producer, Brian Crawford, the godfather of the River's Edge. So I came in, and Millvale was, you know, I live in Shaler, and so Millvale was literally down the street, so it was easy to come in. I was in the studio, and I was able to have some fun with uh, Tom on Funny Money, and by the way, Funny Money's still on, so if you want to watch that, it's a great show. And at that point, uh, Brian just flat out just said to me, he goes, hey, Mike, if you want to do a show, you can do a show. And it kind of got my brain working about like, okay, what would my show be? And what would it be about? Like some people came up to me and said, hey, Mike, you know what you should do? You should do a sports show. You should get a bunch of dudes in a room and you should talk yeah. sports and you should do that. Or someone had sat there and said, you know what, you, you know, d review something, review movies, review TV shows, review morning, you know, talk, you know, whatever, do whatever you want to do. Review, you know, the, the spread in Playboy every week, Ooh. whatever, whatever you want to do. I'd listen to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the thing was, I, I got into it. Okay. So really it started to ask, okay, what would the show be? And that's one of the reasons why I named the show, the Mike Sasson show. Because I didn't want to name it like, okay, Mike does movies, or Mike <laughs> watches TV, or Mike, you know, shits on people's lives. I don't know what I would call it. Anyway, so I just was like really simple. It's, like, it's the Mike Sasson show. And when I pitched it to Brian, initially the concept of the show was going to be, it was going to be Mike Sasson's version of the Bill Burr podcast. Okay. And if you've ever heard the Bill Burr podcast, it's him literally pressing record and him just talking for an hour about whatever the hell he wants to talk about. And I thought I would do the same thing. Right. And, but I wanted, I, I, Brian was already talking about, hey, I'm really stretched in, and, you know, I'm already producing a bunch of shows. If you want me to produce, that's fine. Whatever. I go, you know what? One thing is, though, I want my own producer. Now, as I mentioned before on previous episodes, Alex had done some work for the Q92.9 show, and I knew that she was a graduate of Point Park University, and I also knew that she wasn't doing much with that degree. Hey. <laughs> And so I sat there. I was doing so much at that time. Like? I was taking pictures at Picture People. That's totally broadcasting. There you go. And so I sat there and went, okay, let me ask if Alex wants to produce the show. Now, when I approached Alex about this, um, I was really in full salesman mode. I, because I really thought that I was going to have to sell her on this concept. I thought I was going to have to go up to you and just be like, okay, here's my concept. Here's what we're going to do. Here's the studio. Come by, blah, 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 blah. So I walk up to you and I go, hey, Alex, I'm going to do a new show. And I actually think I wasn't even that excited. I was like really serious. I'm, I'm like, pretty sure I was drinking too. Oh, yeah, you, right? were, you were drunk okay. off your ass. Um, I said, Alex, I'm going to do this new show. I'd really like it if you were my producer. And I was about to go into my sales pitch, and you were like, yeah, great, awesome. And I was like, really? You, you want to do this? And you were like, yeah, absolutely. This sounds like a lot of fun. And I was like, oh, OK. So that's why. I don't why, believe that. Yeah, that's exactly how you were. You no. were very enthusiastic. You were very like that. Which is one of the, you know, so that is the origins of the show. So why did I do the show? Because I wanted to see what the Mike Sasson show would be. 
Question two. What were your expectations of the show? Honestly? What? Uh, I didn't think that it would go on for this long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, like, I didn't think that it was a good idea and that it was a good show. It's just that I've, like... Usually things that I do just don't really, like, pan out to be actually anything. Okay. You know? So I, I didn't really expect this to be going on still. But uh, I'm glad it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, same here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, you know, like, we'll try this, yeah. we'll figure it out. Like, we did we did stuff together beforehand, uh, like, mm -hmm. videos and stuff, and they're just like, oh, you know. Yeah. But never really did well, that's anything. what 90%, that's like 95% of the entertainment industry. Yeah. If you go to any comedian, any, you'd be surprised, even someone at the low level of me <laughs> have been put, pitched things that ultimately... You know, I've been pitched stuff to be on cable networks. I've been pitched stuff to be, you know, on, on local radio, all this kind of stuff. It, it, it's amazing how much you're pitched and someone says, hey, I might be able to do this. And, hey, if, would you be available to do this? Or da, 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 da. And so, yeah, 99% of stuff that you do never gets made. And the stuff that does get made usually doesn't last that long. Right. Actually, Jerry Seinfeld had a, had a funny comment about the entertainment industry is like, most most everything in the entertainment industry is just about the meeting. You want to have the meeting because the meeting makes you feel like you're doing something and then everyone feels good about the meeting. The worst thing that could happen is when it happens because then it's something that could turn into something negative. Right. So that's why most people just want to have the meeting and want to have the idea and then it doesn't turn into anything. The fact that this turned into something is incredible. And the fact that it's, we're now going into our second year is insane. Insane. And the third part that, again, when they say, well, what were your expectations in terms of viewership? What was your expectation in terms of reception? What was your expectations on exactly what the show would be? As I mentioned before, I thought that essentially Alex would just produce. When we started to do like shows, uh, like we did test shows for about a month, what I realized is that Alex is insanely talented as a performer. Now, online, if you want to, you can watch her on this show called <laughs> Daybreak, in which she does a mock you morning to, show. You, of course, you. it wasn't a mock morning show. It was a really, really morning show. You recorded it at 8 p.m. Yeah, so it's still a morning show. But and I think you said you were half drunk. No. You were fully drunk. No. You said you drank I was before. never drunk. You were... You were no. Yes. No alcohol was consumed on that set. You're such a lion <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I never lie, Mike. <laughs> you there. I'm many things, but a liar is not one of them. <laughs> you're laughing because you're lying. Anyways, so if you watch that, one of the things I notice is I'm be, I'll, I'll say it, and I've said it to her privately, and I'll say it to her publicly. If she wanted to, she could be a major, more, uh, major market talent. The first time that you told me this, you said in Johnstown, and I said, well, I said woo. <laughs> no, well, I said, when, okay, so there was a picture of you online of you in like your morning like show get up like you're like I'm Alex Clemens I'll wake you up in the morning and like you were in like the the typical women's like suit type deal kind of deal and you had your regular hair and you were looking all spunky like you were gonna sit there and say how to turn your leftovers into kid-friendly meals that kind of stuff and I sat there and went Alex right now you could be on a morning show in Johnstown which I'll be honest with you out of Point Park University in your early 20s, that's where you start. Still not anything that I would ever want to do. I understand that you'd want to be on, like, Good Morning America at 23 years old. But unless your last name is Bush or Clinton or Obama, you're not going to get on Good Morning America when you're in your early 20s with no experience. We'll see. We'll see. Well, now you have experience. <laughs> that's where I'm going next. Yeah, I love, I love that. That was a little sassy. So what were my expectations? Um, I expected it to be alone. It didn't happen because Alex is really, really good at this. And so the show actually is a lot better than I could have possibly ever, fa ever fathomed. And the reason why is because of that producer over there, Alex. Number three, what was the highlight of the year? Uh, I think the Millville Music Festival. Um, I think it was really cool to see something that, like, we are a part of be, I don't know, like, everyone join us in something that we're a part of. You know what I mean? Like, we were able to see things that we do in action and, like, pay off I will, to I something will, giant and wonderful will, and also hot musicians. I, yeah, you got tasty, tasty musicians, I think, is the way you... Tasty. Tasty is, I think, how you describe them. Um, tasty. I would answer the same thing. 
except for the tasty musician part. You didn't like that part? Um, no, I, I said I don't think that the musicians were as tasty as I'd hoped. Oh. But, um, oh. <laughs> but the thing that I would sit there and say, we'll work yeah, on that for next year. It was some yeah, more tasty musicians. Yeah, more tasty musicians. Anyways, I would sit there and say it's the same thing. The highlight of the year was the Millville Music Festival because just like you said, again, my expectations of it was it was going to be in a few bars in Millvale. It would be a couple people playing acoustic guitar. We'd introduce it. There'd be eight people there, whatever. We'd go on with our lives. Look at the pictures. It was incredible. Incredible. It was. We were the main stage because obviously we're insanely talented people. And the level of bands... The support from the community, the way this whole community came alive for it, it was, and to be really at the center of it, to be introducing these bands, to be backstage, to, you know, get up on stage in front of thousands of people. And the one thing that got me was the fact of the matter is, is like, I don't care where you get your major radio personalities, either here or in New York City, L.A., whatever. No one could have done a better job hosting that weekend than me and Alex. Well, I'm just telling no one could have done a better job. It was, you know, it was major league the whole way. And I got a few free slices of pizza. So come on. What a great weekend. So I would sit there and say the Millville Music Festival again. If you have a highlight for the first year of the show, put it on the comments section either now or after the show, and we'll go from there. Number four, what are you most proud of about the show? I am most proud of. <laughs> uh, I would say the fact that like we have stayed true to what our uh, original vision for the show is, and that like we haven't changed, uh, like we haven't let anyone change the show or like change us in general. Like we are actually our genuine selves we're not trying to be anything and um yeah i think that's that's it <laughs> we're just us i would agree with that I, my thing that i would say what am i most proud of here's here's my thought process is every week when i leave this show i'm hypercritical whenever you see me after a, a comedy set I believe that I did terribly. I'm going over everything that went wrong. I'm going over every joke that didn't hit. I'm going over every stutter of my line. So when I leave this studio, I typically am very kind of like, oh, I missed that, and oh, that sucked, and oh, that technical problem, oh, that sucked, sucked, sucked. Then what I do is I go into my car and I play the song, I play the, the, the show on my, on my uh, radio in my car and I drive around and I go get like a, a drink and I listen to it as if it was, you know, a radio show, whatever. Yeah. And I'm always going to myself, holy shit, is this good? <laughs> like, is this is really, really good. So what I'm most proud of is take any one of the, take any one of the shows and take any show that is being produced in this city. And I'm talking on major market radio with people getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Put their show on, put my show on, put Alex's, everything like that. Put that show on. Our show compares. Our show is in that category. And that's what I'm most proud of because that's what the goal is. The goal of this show is to be the best possible show no matter what medium. And I believe we achieve that every week. Woo! Number five. Wait, wait. Go ahead. We have a comment. Had comment away. From Nathan J. Nathan J. He said, hey. And then he said, it was a blast. I'm assuming he meant the M Millville Music Festival. Thank you very much, Nathan J. It was a, it was, it was a yeah. blast. It was and amazing. And put, like, some rocker signs up. Cool. It was a blast. So thank you very much, Nathan. And, and Oh, by my the way, God. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Mindy Watson t told me that I look like Demi Lovato. That's good. Me. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said, oh, my God. Demi Lovato's pretty good looking. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> If she said I look like Demi Lovato, I'd be like, hey, that's a little weird. Thanks for that. Thanks for nothing. Comment away. Oh, we'll always read the comments. And by the way, just so you know, we're raising money for next year's Millvale Music Festival what? this Saturday in front of the Mr. Small's Theater right before 10,000 Maniacs. Yeah. So if you want to see 10,000 <laughs> Maniacs. It makes me think of that there's going to be, you know, like 10,000 Maniacs, like 10,000 crazy people there. There will be because it's going to be <laughs> awesome. By the way, we'll be saving, raising money outside of Mr. Small. We'll be saving this. So come out right before Mr. Small's Theater, outside, out, uh, before this Saturday's big show with 10,000 Maniacs. Me and Alex are going to be hosting a benefit for the Millvale Music Festival, making it so that we can honestly get more free pizza next year because that is the goal always. So 
Number five. Yes. Moving forward. Yeah. How do you see the show evolving moving forward? Um, I'd say lots of like jello fights and um, naked pageants, um, more naked people. But actually, I think that we'd be able to do those things because of our new studio. I think that's the biggest thing for us moving forward is that we have a new studio, we have more opportunities, and we have a great opportunity to meet people because we're right here at Mr. Smalls where there's like a jillion live bands all the time. Absolutely. Now, just as an aside, just so you know how <laughs> this show develops, people would assume that between the two of us, the one who comes up with the most ideas for like stripper jello fights and like, you know, hey, why don't we get like 15 naked dudes and have them run through Millvale and like throw Molotov cocktails into cop cars? Yeah. You'd assume that would be <laughs> my idea. No, those are Alex's ideas. <laughs> Alex is the one that like on a Saturday or Tuesday would be like, I saw a hot guy. I want him on the show. Let's put him on. I don't even know if he speaks English, but he's good looking. And I'm just like, no, Alex, we are not doing no. this. But so yeah, I What if we put him in jello though? <laughs> yeah. So by the way, yeah, so what we're going to do, you, we have our own, that's one thing, again, the, the, the progression of the show is going to be, there, there's a big old performance space right over there, pointed, if you're, if you're listening to it, you have no idea what I'm pointing at, but right next door, there's a big performance space, uh, um, what we're going to do there, yeah, we could have stripper jello fights. Yeah. We could have uh, Miss, Miss and Mrs. Michael Sasson being yeah. crowned. We could have um, bands. We could have live comedy shows. We could have people running for president. We could have what? people throwing um, dodgeballs at people's nuts and seeing if they could win concert tickets. We have the space now. I don't want to do that. Okay. We could have the hot guys that Alex sees show up and we could give them their own show and not broadcast it, but they're dumb, so they think they are. That's the kind of stuff that we're going to have on this show. I don't want to do any mean things. Oh, well, look, we'll have that in post. Okay, so, but these are actually real things we're going to do moving okay. forward. Number one, if you go on to iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, you have to basically find us by going to the River's Edge, and then under that you find the Mike Sasson Show. Not anymore. Moving forward, all you have to do is punch in Mike Sasson, and you find this show immediately on those podcast things. You so, just wanted your name to be more famous. We know that, Mike. It's do you okay. want to make it to where you can punch in Alex Clemens, too? Yeah. Okay. No, I'll, I'm yeah. just kidding. Okay. We no. don't need that. By the way, we're going to do I that, I don't too. want people to know I'm involved. Okay. <laughs> she just, that's one of the reasons why that she does it. It's pl plausible deniability. <laughs> so if this show sucks, we're like, it's his show. I just, on, yeah. I just sit there. I didn't there. do anything. I just sit there and turn up the volume and go, who listens to this shit? <laughs> so that's one. Um, number two, more outside videos. Ooh. We're going to do more outside videos. We're going to do, uh, there's a cool promotion that we're going to be starting probably in Alex, uh, not in Alex, in August. It's August Alex. <laughs> it's the month of Alex. It'll be August. And uh, so we're going to have a cool promotion. We're going to be going out. We're going to be helping out local businesses. So we're going to be checking that out. Also, um, we're going to have more live guests. Because the thing about it is, as I mentioned before, we have a giant studio. Yeah. We could have the entire 10,000 maniacs in this studio. Ten, I don't, what, how, how many are there? There's like 37 members of the band. Wait, are you serious? There's like eight. Oh. Earth, Wind, That's and the Fire. Same. Yeah. So there's only, like, we can have Earth, Wind, and Fire in here. We could have Rush perform Tom Sawyer. We and we have we like snacks and shit. We do have snacks. And shit. And shit. Shit's in that room. <laughs> That's the toilet. Snacks are in that room. So if someone says, hey, I'd like a snack, I'm like, that room. I want to take a shit. That room. It's all here. Moving forward, and also, if whatever you want to see moving forward, comment, put it down. Even if the show's already broadcast, we'll, you know, look at it and probably, you know, laugh at it. But if it's a good idea, we'll steal it and not give you credit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you credit. Year two, Mike becomes more of a jerk. <laughs> oh, God. So. I'm done then. Okay. It's, the, it's year one. That's the performance review. Thank you very much. We're moving forward. After the break. Alex reviews the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. I bet she thought it sucked, because it does suck. It's the Mike Sasson Show. We'll be right back. Listeners, my name is Rob Spear. And I'm Ian Insect. And on July 21st, we are doing a 10 p.m. comedy show at Mr. Small's Theater here in Millvale. 
specifically at the Fun House upstairs. If you haven't been, come by, check it out. Me and Rob are going to be doing a comedy show together. It's $8 at the door, 5 in advance, $3 off at the door if you mention River's Edge PGH. Which is the thing you're listening to right now. So we tried to make it as convenient as possible. So yeah. There's since, no way you'll forget that. Since we looked out for you, how about you look out for us and come hang out on July 21st at 10 p.m.? That is at the Fun House at Mr. Small's. It's going to be a lot of fun, as the name indicates, and who knows, you might learn something. No. No, you <laughs> I mean, I, I, just, I just don't want to lie to them. Come see us on July 21st, again at 10 p.m. at the Fun House at Mr. Small's. Assassin Show again live here at Mr. Small's studio in beautiful Millville, Pennsylvania. You're watching us on Facebook Live or you're listening to us at www.riversedgepgh.com or on TuneIn Radio or after the fact on SoundCloud, Google Play, or iTunes. I, th I thought something was wrong for a second that the audio cut out. I was like, what's happening? It's called... A long Dramatic pause. pauses. Anyways, again, thank you very much. It's the first year anniversary show. My name's Mike Sass, and that is Alex Clemens. Alex, not only is she talented, not only is she insanely beautiful, but she likes to get drunk and then write stuff down. It's called Bar Thoughts and Experiences. She has her own theme song. We're playing it right now. Maybe y'all can relate. My style's dope any way that you slice it. It's a fresh cut, hope that you like it. About to open up a can of some... I think it's like, if, if, if this is too old school for you, but there was a, a old sketch on Saturday Night Live called Sprockets when Mike Myers pretended to be like a, like an avant-garde German like dancer, like he would be on the odds when chalk on sprockets when we dance. So that's how I was dancing right then, if you're watching. That, I was dancing like Dieter on sprockets. Cool. And then Alex was dancing like uh, a normal... A cool hip chick. A normal human being. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> what is your bar thought and experience for this? Okay, so uh, like I said last week, I was going to watch the All-Star Game, and luckily you did remind me, because I did totally forget. I don't I did remember totally what I was you. doing. I was like laying in bed, and I was like, oh, I guess I should do this while I paint my nails and okay. stuff. All right. Um, guess who was there? Who? Adam Scott was there, which I love him. Okay. Yeah, it's a big famous he type has, thing. Well, he has like a new show coming out on uh, Fox. Okay. So that's why he was there. By the way, it was in Miami this year. Some years, like it, the All Star Game, like you could tell, like the All Stars are like, this year's All Star Game is in Milwaukee. And they're like, okay, yeah. whatever. But they're like, this year's All Star Game is in Miami. They're like, all right, this year yeah. we kind of want to try. Yeah, um, I want to go to it. Yeah, because of Latin hookers. Go ahead. No, but it seems like, okay, it's um, it's very boring to watch on TV. Oh, I sucks. very much agree with you. Yeah. But I think I'd like to go to it because it's so laid back. Like, the weather was nice. Like, and it just, everyone's in a good mood. Like, the announcers don't care. The players don't care. Like, one of the players walked up, took a picture with the umpire, put his phone in his back pocket, and then bat. Tid. Is is that know, yeah? You what use the proper the, term of that. He batted. Um, <laughs> by the way, um, is that how you'd want mo most sports to be? Just yeah. like whoever wins wins, whoever loses loses, and we See, just go on with life. Yeah, I like to go to sporting events. Like I like to go to preseason football games because mm. one, no one cares about me falling asleep if I do. Okay. Like because I I have fallen asleep at many a games before, so I like. I don't know. I I like to people not to judge me. I just want to go sit in the nice weather. You know, like. Enjoy the ambiance of it, eat some food, drink some beer, you know, and then everyone's like, oh, cool, like that dude just hit a home run. Yay, good for him. Oh, look, that dude on the other team just hit a home run. Yay, good for him. You were describing how it was to go to a pirate game when the 20 years of pure suck. Because that's how most people were back then. It's just like the Pirates are 30 games out by Memorial Day, and you'd be like, oh, Brian Giles just hit a home run. Isn't that nice for him? Yeah. Yay. Because we knew we weren't going to do anything. The it's almost that... become more like pressure filled with the team is good. You're like, oh, they can win something. It's more important that way. The announcers were like my favorite thing because they're like, oh, the excitement in, in the stadium today. And they're like, no excitement in their voice. Um, that, that made me laugh. There was also a commercial during the All-Star Game about what's happening this season in baseball. And I was like, we know what's fucking happening. The same thing happens every year. Like, the same teams are usually good, mm -hmm. and they hit a baseball. Yep. 
same things happen every single year. Yeah. Why would they do like a promo like that? Because they I have know to. What's they, happening. Ha they have to like pretend and all that kind of stuff. It's like this season on baseball. Now, one of the cool things in 1994, I did go to the, the All Star game when it was here in Pittsburgh back at Old Three Rivers. Wow. And that was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't go when it was at PNC Park because. Um, I was I would have to have paid for the ticket and back in 1994 my dad did so I was like thanks dad but um no I mean it is a cool event because again you get to see all the all-stars and all that kind of stuff and it is very chill um one thing about it though that sucks now is back then before interleague play and before every game was on television you never got to see the American League players so it was a big deal in 1994 that like I got to see Ken Griffey Jr. or I got to see Frank Thomas or I got to see Cal Ripken Jr. because they played in the American League, so they never came to Pittsburgh. So the fact that oh wait, cool, there's there's a player from the New York Yankees. New York Yankees never come to Pittsburgh. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Now they all show up and like oh great, it's just them again, kind of deal. And then you watch there's 97 games a day, so it kind of does suck. But the, the one thing is I'm, everyone drunk though. Like I feel like all the players could be drunk. Well, they're at least hung over. Okay. Because what that's what I would do if I was playing in that game. Yeah. You're like, yeah, let's let's get some beers in the dugout. Well, there are beers in the clubhouse. Ooh. There, are, you know, that's always been a big deal. Is that that's kind of like the hidden secret about baseball. Is that um, is it a hidden secret if you know about it? Well, everyone knows about it except for like little kids. We like keep them out of the out of the loop. But um, to play 162 games in 180 days, you're basically drunk most of the time, high most of the time, or on pain pills most of the time. Oh. So, but you know what? Fun. It's baseball. Woo! You're drunk as hell. Whatever. Uh, I mean, like, you know, like there was the, always the big deal back in the 80s. There was a the big cocaine trial in Pittsburgh. How else are you going to get through 162 baseball games other than cocaine? I mean, come on, people. Yeah. What were you expecting? Cocaine. Cocaine. I do cocaine. But I decided something about their butts. Okay. Okay. Mm. Um, number one, pitchers always look like they have the best butts, but I think it's just because when you can see them more, like you see their butts more because they're yeah. facing the other mm -hmm. way, you know? Mm -hmm. And the way that they pitch and then like walk backwards makes their butt look really good. So all of the pitchers, I was like, oh, they have nice butts, but they don't really in real life. It's just like how they're moving and stuff. What sport has the nicest butts? Um... I don't know. Some hockey players, like, because uh, I've seen, like, some of the Penguins come into my work, and, like, every time they leave, they're like, whoa. Look hockey that. butts are, are it's, hockey butts are weird because, like, Sidney Crosby's butt is weird for his body type. Because he's, like, a small, he's, like, a decently fit dude. Yeah. But he has the ass of, like, a 6'5", like 320-pound a defensive lineman. It's because, like, like their, their legs are so muscular, and they're always, you know, like, working out their legs. So their calves and their butts are usually And they always nice. walk. They, they walk weird. Like, they walk like they're, like, they just got off a horse, and they're, like, leaning forward kind Something's of deal. up their butt. Yeah. That's how the hockey players walk. It's very, very unusual. Now, one thing about football that I'd never learned, like, I remember this when I was in high school. Um... We were practicing, and, like, the cheerleaders were off in the corner, and they were ready to get practice and everything like that. And, like, these two, like, girls that I knew were sitting in the corner, and they were just, like, watching. I'm like, oh, I didn't know they were interested in football. And eventually we're, like, walking. So I walk over, and I go, so how was practice? Like, jokingly. And she goes, what do you mean? I go, well, you were watching. What did you find? She goes, oh, you're just not looking at your butts. See, football does have the best uniforms for butts. Yes. It makes basically anyone's butts look good. Which baseball, I would say baseball is second best for uniforms. But really? Because most of them are baggy. Yeah, but like it's, they're baggy in a certain type of way. Like if you have any kind of meat on your bones, like mm -hmm. it looks like you have a nice butt. Okay. Yeah. I would assume football, pant, football pants are essentially male yoga pants. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why, and male yoga, and yoga pants and uh, leggings, whatever you want to call them, are really good at, like, they're almost like wonder bras for butts. Like, they really help in terms of lift and condense in terms of, the, of uh, a girl's butt. So, would you, okay, so if we're ranking, if we're having the Alex Clemens ranking of butts, would it be number, who would be number one in terms of butts? In the world? Uh, in terms of, like, players. So is it hockey, football, basketball, oh, whatever? I would say... Um, but it's hard to decide because there's different reasons. Like, these people don't actually have good butts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, football players, a lot of them don't what actually have good butts. What would you watch? Uh, by the way, you know, we, you can't we, see hockey goodness. player butts in okay. their things, though. Okay, well, then that would be last. So, for yeah. butt watching, you would sit there and say football, hockey. Football, baseball, hockey. What about basketball? I don't, I don't know. I don't ever watch basketball. Where does soccer rank? Uh, 
In terms of butts. I'm not looking at their butts. Really? In soccer. Because they're so beautiful. Okay. You don't need to look at their butts. I know, because you they don't. You just look at their beautiful faces, and you're like, damn. Yeah. Their whole bodies are like, damn. Yes. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when, you do, when, you, when your sport is essentially just jogging with periodic bursts of sprinting, you typically would, you know, you're typically going to kind of cut. <laughs> so overall, Major League Baseball All-Star Game, give it a, a recommendation for next year for the listeners. I'm going next year. You're going. Where is it playing? I don't know, but I'm going. Well, okay, let's Google that. Where, well, I, so uh, help me figure out. We can get out. you credentials. I forget this dude's name. You're going to have to help me. Okay. Um, so he was on the body issue. He's like the hottest baseball players he plays for washington do you know who i'm talking about bryce harper yes okay oh, he's gonna God. get paid like 40 or 50 million dollars he should just baseball. get paid just for being the best looking baseball player okay he's like younger than you he's, he's like, beautiful okay well then all but right he's married is he yeah i'll be honest and with you. all of them are married to his like long time high school sweetheart blah 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 here's another secret with baseball players um that means nothing to them but uh actually with professional athletes in general i'm gonna look into the camera if you're married to a professional athlete when he goes on the road he's cheating on you i'm just telling you aww. um oh ah, they know that uh so i'm looking where, where is next year's all-star game where is it mike I hope it's somewhere fun. Okay. Well, where would you want it to that be? That I can, like, go clubbing with the baseball players afterwards. <laughs> well, did you hear when um, uh, I'm when the VIPC. baseball All-Star game was in 2004, uh, Jeter rented out Diesel, and he had his own party there? Like, that's what he did. Oh. Like, he just, he had people show up to Pittsburgh. He's like, okay, where's the nicest club that I can get to? He's like, well, there's this Diesel. But seriously? That's what they recommended? It's 2004. Okay. Anyway. That's true. And then, so he sat there, and they went, oh, here. And so he goes, okay, rent it out. Yeah, let's do it. Let's so all party. The, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to rent out my own place and be like, and invite all the baseball players, and then none of them show up. They'd show up if you'd, like, tell them that you I don't care. You know, I'll get drunk by myself. They will show up. Trust me. Where is it? I'm trying to. I was trying to. Well, entertain the people for a couple seconds. I was trying to do that, and then okay. you just got distracted yourself. Mm. Should I just dance the whole time while yeah, you're looking dance, at it? dance. Comment on what Alex should be doing right now. I can read. Mm. Yeah, uh, read comments. Nathan J says, Yes. That was it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Nathan. Uh, okay. He's just agreeing with everything that I say. Absolutely. I would agree yes, with everything. Alex. Uh, next year's All-Star. Okay. All right. Did you get it? I'm trying to. I don't, like, Google is a fast thing. I don't know what you're trying to do over okay, there. Okay, it's just, I'm trying to. You, sh you would think it would just pop up right away. You'd think, but, um, oh, I think it might be close. Uh, I want it to be like in Vegas or okay. it's not gonna somewhere be in Vegas. warm, hopefully. Well, I mean, it has to be warm. It's the summer. So. All right. So it would be cool if it was in Vegas. They might put a team in Vegas because they're doing all this kind of stuff. This has pretty much brought the game to a halt. I mean, brought the thing to a halt. Okay, Marlins. Yeah, we oh. should just end the show. Okay. Next year, pretty close, Washington, D.C. Oh. You don't want to go to Washington, D.C.? Not really. Okay, 2019, it's in Cleveland. Oh, my God, it's just getting worse and worse. Um, and then that's all the ones they have. I guess I'll go to Washington, D.C. It's, yeah, like, Washington, not really my favorite place in the world. But I think there's it's boring. Gonna, like, once you go there, once you But that's Bryce everything. Harper's home field, so he's probably can, that's where you're really going to have that connection where ultimately you will become his future second wife. Ooh, his mistress. Do you want, would you be Mistress Bri Alex? Would you become yes. Bryce Harper? Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was... And I would like to be called Mistress. And would you be referred to it? You wouldn't want just to. Just from now on, like I don't even, I'm not even called Alex anymore. I'm just Mistress. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you be insulted by side piece or side bitch? What do they call it? Oh, no, I want Mistress. Okay, fine. It sounds like mysterious. Okay. Thank you very much. Fun. That was the review of the Major League Baseball All Star Game. But. Next up. What is next? The five takes. Tell us. Tell five us, Five takes. It's my bar thoughts and experiences, only more... Epic. Epic. Just kidding. It's not more epic, but... It is more epic. All five of these are about Major League Baseball players' butts, by the way. <laughs> Alex is having fun, which is the most important thing. Okay. Five takes. Number five. Um, rich women are insanely good looking. I did a show I don't, uh, no. last week. I did a show in Mount Lebanon, <laughs> and holy shit. It's because they can afford to be good looking. I know. 
but holy, no, mostly I do like dying steel mill towns, and like a woman will come up to me and go, I really like the show. I'm like, oh, that's great. And she goes, oh, yeah, you know, I remember, and I get to them, they're like 28 years old, I'm like, I really thought you were in your mid-50s. Oh. Now, these women were coming up to me like, oh, that was a good show, and then they brought their like, like 22-year-old daughters. I'm like, how old are you? And it turns out they're like in their mid-50s, and I'm like, holy shit, were you well put together. So something well about wealth, again, it's tanning, it's plastic surgery, it's not having to work at all. And it's like a good, uh, eventually you get to like a good gene pool, you yes. know? Like the genes just work themselves out yes. after a while. Like in, uh, holy, you know? holy. The less holy. drugs. I have said this, well, up. better drugs. Yeah. Anyways, one thing I've always said to guys is if you really are a big fan of like 40, 50 year old hot women, go to the Fox Chapel area track at about 11 a.m. That's where they all meet and discuss their husbands who just traded in and got younger Alex's. So, like, when Alex goes and gets Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper's current wife will go to a local uh, track and talk shit on Alex. So, again, wah, wah. number five, rich women are really good looking. Uh, number four, people with kids are starting to piss me off. They have it already? Um, even more so. So, okay, I'm doing a mic yesterday, and I have this entire bit on how I hate clean comedy. And I think that essentially one of the things I hate about society right now is we take something amazing and then people try to water it down and turn it into something completely lame and stupid. Yeah. All right? So I'm about to start this bit. And what happens? What? Parents bring in about four eight-year-olds. What? Yes. Where were you? I was on the south side at a bar and... Uh, the, literally, like like a 14-year-old girl walks in, a 12-year-old girl walks in, an 8-year-old like boy walks in, and they sit down when we're doing open mic comedy. What time of day this was? This About 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Ugh. Should they be in bed? Exactly. I was in bed at 8 o'clock at those days. That's why I'm always mad because I missed A-team. So, but the thing is, is that I sit there and I go, you know what? It's not then my responsibility to then like make my act clean when I'm clearly in my space. If I were to go to like, there's certain places where like you shouldn't be if you're older. Like you, you shouldn't see me two o'clock in the afternoon, like sitting at a playground at an ele Ew. elementary school. Yeah, that'd be bad. Ooh, that's exactly what it would be. Nine o'clock at an open mic on the South side, yeah, an eight-year-old kid should not be there. So that's the first time I got pissed off at parents. Second, in my neighborhood, I'm driving around a corner, and I see a group of people standing in the middle of the road. What? Okay. So they're standing in the middle of the road. They're like what are they doing there? They're just having a conversation. They're just like, hey, the, mi the middle of the road's a cool place to have a conversation. One of the people has like a one-and-a-half, two-year-old little kid. They have no control of him. They're just, he's just running on the road. So... The kid is now running towards my car. I stop the car, obviously, because I don't want to run over a two-year-old. The mom picks up the kid, looks at me like I'm, a big, I'm the big asshole. And I'm like, A, why are you in the middle of the road? And B, why don't you have control of your kid if you're in the middle of the road? It's somehow my fault that, like, oh, I'm driving a car on the road. So again, parents, go to hell. Take care of your kid. I don't have a kid. I'm the smart one. Get out of my face. Out of here. So that. Well, okay then. Okay. You, you, you were with me for a while, and now yeah, you're a little scared. Yeah. Okay. That's what kind of happens on this show. Mike's about to go, like, kill children. So. I might. Number three, I'm not killing children. I'm like, take care of your kids. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Number three, Diner Drive and Dive is a great show. What, what you said that. Diners, Drive-Is, and Dives is a great show. I agree. I love that show. I love that show too much. It's, you know why I love it? Because it shows me how to cook things that I would actually eat. Like? It's burgers. Burgers. Pizza. Barbecue. I know how to barbecue now. I've made better burgers and stuff like that because I know how to do dry rubs and all that other kind of good stuff. So thank you, Guy Fieri. Everyone always shits on Guy Fieri. Thank you, Guy Fieri, for putting on a cool show that shows dudes and people who want to cook cool stuff how to cook cool stuff. Because here's the thing. Nobody in my family really knows how to cook. So now when I go to the barbecue, I know how to make good burgers. I know how to, like, you know, it's salt and pepper. That's all you need. That you don't need to do anything else. Don't pat down the bun. The, the fat is flavored. Boom. I know these things. Why? Diners, drivers, and dives.
Great show. Okay. All right. Uh, number two, I'm going to open a store called Lottery and Cigarettes. Here's why. Why? Because the thing that pisses me off more than anything else is when I get caught behind the person buying either lottery or cigarettes. So I want a whole store to where if I walk in there, I know that's the only thing they sell is lottery and cigarettes. I'm going to start paying people to follow you around to gas stations and just get in front of you in line and just order like 60 packs of cigarettes but change their mind every time and then also a million lottery tickets. I would. I, that would be m money well spent. If you had a video camera when I'm sitting there, when some old lady's like, "Excuse me, because I need I need six scratch offs, and I I need I need a I need a cigarette brand that hasn't been available since 1973, and some uh, some long cut uh, Copenhagen that my son took to Vietnam, and I, and I'm just like, get to, get out of my face. I know your face. That's happening. That's I I, I just get out of here. Because here's the thing about lottery. I understand that this is your dream, that you want to make it, that you that, that you want to do this. But you know what? I have a dream. I want to be a stand-up comic. I don't stand in front of you in line and have to tell jokes to the cashier so it makes you late. So guess what? I want to start a store, lottery and cigarettes, so that's where you go. Don't go to the regular store and put people in front of me. Go to lottery and cigarettes. Mike's lottery and cigarettes. That's what I would do. And number one, one thing that I've noticed as I've grown older. You now remember when things weren't there, and now it's weird that they're part of everyday life. Like what? Hummus. Aw. I remember when there was, like, no one knew what hummus was. Like, you had to go to, like, a weird restaurant that, like, three people would be in to get hummus. Now, like, you can get hummus at a gas station. It's so weird to, like, how much hummus has become part of our day-to-day -day lives. So I'm thinking of more things in my life that I now I can now remember before that existed. Like again, the most obvious cell phones. Yeah. I remember when everyone you know I had to go to a pay phone. I remember the whole concept of calling collect. I remember I had a job and I remember that I knew specific places where they had the pay phones low to where I could drive up in my car and talk on there and I had a calling card and all that kind of shit. So that's how old I am. Also, Taco Bells. I remember life before Taco Bells in Pittsburgh. What? What do you mean? Yes. What? Yes. No. There was a time. That sounds horrible. That a, makes me want to cry. There was a time to where, like, the, there was this new thing. Like, you drove by and go, what's that? That's a Taco Bell. Oh, my God. Yes. They're building a new Taco Bell near my house. Who cares? Who cares about what? I don't care about that. Okay. But I'm just saying. I want them to build a Taco Bell near my house. I understand. But, some, but they like to keep people at Mount Washington fit. So yes. they don't have any fast food places up there. Yeah, but they we're also the fittest people in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and they also love me more because I'm a big time internet radio celebrity. So they put Taco Bell's near me. It's definitely one of those. So number one is it's weird when things show up. We'll be back in a few <laughs> minutes to cla to class up the show with news and notes. Again, Kid Rock's running for Senate, and also a reason why you shouldn't move to New York City. It's the Mike Sasson Show. We'll be right back. Edge is partnering with Frank's Pizza and Chicken to offer you 10% off your ZA. That's short for pizza. Seriously? ZA? What? Anyway, mention you heard this ad and Frank's will give you 10% off your order of $15 or more. Oh my god, have you tried their famous buffalo chicken pizza? Oh, don't even get me started. Can you name all four Frank's locations? Um, Millville, obviously. Uh, Troy Hill, Shaler, and North Hills. Gold Star! Anyway, support the River's Edge radio network by ordering from Frank's Pizza and Chicken the next time you get hungry for some ZA. And don't forget to mention you heard this ad so you get your 10% off. Go to Frank's PizzaChicken.com for more info. Offer good for a limited time. Order must be $15 or more for taxes. Cannot be combined with other discounts or offers. Other legal jargon and whatnot. You're listening to the Mike Sasson Show on the River's Edge. You may be listening live at www.riversedgepgh.com or on TuneIn Radio, or you're watching live on Facebook Live, or you're listening after the fact on TuneIn Radio, or no, you're listening on SoundCloud, iTunes, or Google Play. If you want to be part of the River's Edge, the movement. It's not just a radio station. It's not just local amusement. It's a movement. The Godfather himself will be at Cativo this Saturday for the second annual Indie Rock Fest. A lot yeah. of great bands are going to be there, including the Godfather himself. Me and Alex will be out front of Mr. Small's Theater at 5 p.m. We'll be outside right before the big 10,000 Maniac show raising money for... Dun, dun, dun. 
The Millvale Music Festival, as we mentioned, last year's uh, Millvale Music Festival was absolutely epic. So it's going to be great. Also, we want to thank uh, Liz Victory. She's joining the River's Edge family. She's going to be on 10 a.m. Thursday. So she's going to be amazing. She's going to be talking about all her wonderful things. She's a great local musician. So watch that show as well. Um, other than that, that's all of the things we have to promote. Again, listen to local music on www.riversedgepgh.com. And also listen to the Mike Sasson Show right now as we go over news and notes. Play the song. Get on. It's news and notes. It's the Mike Sasson Show first anniversary show. Thank you very much, everyone who has supported the show. And again, comment away on Facebook Live. Even after the broadcast, you can do that. Okay. Alex, you have had family members live in New York. I have family members and friends that live in New York. And you know what? There's always that thing in comedy is, okay, when do you leave? Where do you go? Do you go to New York, L.A., everything like that? More and more, I'm almost leaning more towards Los Angeles because of stories like this. Tell us. So, 26-year-old woman, after a long day of work in Manhattan, is on the J train going back to Jamaica, Queens. It's about an hour train ride back to Queens. So, it's 2 in the morning. She plugs in her uh, headphones, and she kind of zonks out. And she's sitting there, and she kind of closes her eyes, gets into the music. And all of a sudden, she feels something wet. She opens up. A bum's pissing in her face. No. This made the New York Post. She opens her eyes, and a guy is urinating on her face. What did she do? She said, hey, don't urinate on my face. Urinate and, on my shoulder. Yeah, that's what shoulders are for. And then here's the, the kicker part. What? The, cha the train stopped, the guy ran away, and they didn't catch him. So right now, there's a guy running around New York City... Who likes to pee in people's faces? Hilarious. Hilarious. Speaking of that, R. Kelly's back in the news. That is what's called a pro segue. R. Kelly, I don't know if you remember a couple years ago, Alex, he got in trouble because apparently he was urinating on 14-year-old girls and recording it, which apparently oh. people are not a big fan of. What? What? Um, well, now he's kind of having an issue because uh, apparently... He has a group of women living in houses outside of Atlanta and Chicago in which the parents of these young girls, who are all like in their like late teens, early 20s, um, they believe that he has brainwashed them into becoming his sex slaves. Nice. And so, it's, you know, apparently R. Kelly controls every aspect of their lives. How is he brainwashing them? Because okay. he's basically finding these girls. They want to be in the music industry. He's saying to them, hey, I'm R. Kelly. I'll get you in the music industry. Listen to me. And so he puts them in there and says, hey, we'll record. We'll get all this kind of stuff. And he sits there and goes, this is how you got to eat. And this is how much you got to sleep. And this is how much you can have sex with me. And this is how. I'm going to videotape it and all this other kind of stuff. Things that are big time in the music industry. They don't know this for sure, though. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing. One of the women came out and was on TMZ saying, no, I'm here on my own volition. I'm, you know, I'm, my parents are being just sticks in the mud. This is where I want to be, blah, blah, blah. But is she brainwashed? Yeah, it sounds like kind of like a Charlie Manson type thing. Absolutely. So... R. Kelly, again, back with uh, the whole weird sex thing, but enough people like his music, so he'll kind of get away with that. Kid Rock, uh, real name is uh, Robert Ritchie. No way. Yeah, Robert Ritchie, who's, at, by the way, this was another thing. Why would you change that? You, 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 would, you would listen to a music album uh, from Robert Ritchie? Hell yeah. I'd uh, rather listen to that than Kid Rock. Okay. Who the hell came up with that? He wasn't even a kid. Like, Well, at the time, I guess, uh, he was young, and I guess Robert turned into Rock. I don't know. Who cares? It's stupid. He's stupid. Anyways, proving again that America is going down a giant shithole, Kid Rock is openly telling people that he wants to run on the Republican ticket for the United States Senate in Michigan. God help us. Here's my thing. Where we are right now, I wouldn't doubt if he won. I would have no... If he ran, and actually, because he'd probably run as Robert Ritchie, 
By the way, he comes from if money. If he runs as Kid Rock, I'm just going to no, go. No, he's going to run it. He has to run as Robert Ritchie. By the way, his dad, Bill Ritchie, owned a big car dealership, and he sold his house last year that Kid Rock grew up in for about $1.5 million. Well, shit. Well, shit means a kid. Yeah, I love Kid Rock tries to sell that he's, oh, I'm, 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 I'm good old boy. I live in a trailer. I love Paps Blue. I, I love barbecue. No, you lived in a $1.5 million house because your dad owned a giant car dealership in Michigan. You were a rich kid. So guess what? Rich kid, famous state that, you know, pe pe filled with people that need something to do with their lives. Kid Rock's probably going to be a senator. Isn't that going to be wonderful? Moving forward. This, I thought, was actually kind of cool. Barstool Sports has a CEO. It's a woman, Erica Narduni. And she was going over how she picks candidates to be part of Barstool Sports. It's very interesting. What she does is if she's interviewing somebody, she will text them at odd hours. Like she'll text them at like 9 p.m. on Sunday, or 11 a.m. on a you know, or 11 a.m. on a Saturday, something like that. And her rule is, I expect you to be back with a response within three hours. Wow. If you don't, then I don't hire you. I wouldn't be hired. <laughs> because her point is, obviously you need to be able to be kind of in both places. You need to be able to, you know, I, I understand that life needs to be, you know, you need your own life, but I come up with ideas at odd hours and I need you on when you need to be on. And I want to find people that are committed to being on Barstool Sports. Yeah. So personally, it would work for me because I typically when you text me, I text right back. You, you're pretty good with texting. I'm, no, I'm not. You're okay with it. In, in the in the annals of texting. I sometimes go like three days without answering you. And I'll be like, oh, sorry, I forgot to answer I'll that I'll be text. honest with I you. I actually didn't want to answer that text, but yeah. I'm going to now because I have to text you about something. Here's the thing. Yeah, I, at least you give me that. I have people in my life that flat out just never text me back. Because, again, I'm not well liked. But uh, I think that's actually a cool thing. I, there's, there's certain things that I've read that people do during hiring that are good ideas, but also very scary. Like I was reading about this one person who during the interview, they would send the person out to take pictures of what their car looked like. Oh. And the point would be if the car was messy, if the car looked unkept, if all that kind of stuff, then she would have like, okay, that's how he keeps I his personal like life. I don't like that. That's yeah. stupid because I'm a very messy person. My car is disgusting, but I don't think that affects my work ethic. I think if, in her mind, she wants people with clean cars, clean minds. That's stupid. Well, again, if you if you work clutter at, makes you creative. Well, again, most people don't want creative. Most people want drones. Most people want people that just say yes sir, no sir. That's why we're in the position we're in, where Kid Rock could possibly be a senator. Um, so again, th I think that's actually a pretty good idea. Do the texting. Um, someone came out with the millennial brands that over the last year have improved the most amongst millennials in terms of likability. What was the, no don't put it up yet. Okay. What was the number one, in your opinion, as a millennial, the number one brand amongst millennials that actually improved in terms of their likability? Brand. Yeah. Like anything? Anything. I don't know. Uber. Maybe, oh, oh. Uber. Yeah. Even though last year they were, they were accused of withholding things and sexual harassing and all that other kind of good stuff, the number one brand that has the biggest thing with in terms of um, likability amongst millennials is Uber. Number two, Instagram. That's what I was going to say, Instagram, yeah. Number three, Lyft. So, again, millennials love getting... You know, cars when they get and drunk. And taking pictures of it. Yeah, and taking pictures of it. Uh, number four, Snapchat. Number five, TLC. What the hell? Yeah. Nah. -uh. Yeah, TLC. That's wrong. Went from Lies. previous score six point six to eleven point three amongst they millennials. They to be on that list. Okay. Uh, Twitter is number six. No. WhatsApp is seven. Yeah. What's WhatsApp? Uh, it's like a secret. <laughs> I don't. You can like message people from other countries or like I don't. I I know that you can. Like, you can't necessarily see it. Like, you could lock your messages so that someone opening your phone couldn't see it. Okay. Number eight, Delta Airlines. Number nine, Spotify. And number 10, Visa. 
Um, number 11 is Adidas. Now, one thing they noticed about this is a lot of these brands were actually available. They're not all Ubers and Lyfts and stuff like that. Like Adidas was on the list. Visa was on the list. Right. Puma like they've been the list. available for a long time. So what they're saying is it's not impossible to reconfigure your brand so that young people kind of like it. No. Nah, whatever. All right. So that's number four. Number five. I owned a Ford Fusion at one time and um, kind of went crapped out. So now I don't own a Ford Fusion anymore. But maybe I would have liked it if it was one of these new Ford Fusions that come with drugs from Mexico. Yeah. So. Hell yeah. Apparently, and this was actually shipped to Youngstown. They were, you know, these cars are made in Mexico. They're put on cars to uh, dealerships. So they're finding in like, this one was found in Youngstown, but they were also found in Minnesota and other places in the country. Drug runners put the drugs in where the spare tire would be to help get drugs across the border. You know, that's really smart. I tried to do that coming back from Canada once. Not drugs, alcohol, but I did that. Why would you try to bring back alcohol? From Canada? Yeah. Is it special alcohol? No, I was not 21. Ah, but you, you could get it in Canada because in Canada you, have to, you can, have to be 19. Canada you can get alcohol when you're like an infant. And then like in America, they'd be like, no, you're not 21 anymore. So you tried to smoke. Did it work? No. Uh, did Only they- because they stopped us. Oh, they could have busted you like hardcore for that. No. Yeah. They were just like, it was very scary because we were coming back and they uh, stopped us and we had to go into like in this inside part and they questioned us all separately. And I was like freaking out. I was like, what did you tell them? What should I tell them? What do we do? Do we tell them about the alcohol? What do we do? And we ended up all telling them. And then afterwards, um, we they poured it out in front of us, which I was like, that's mean. Um, and they said... You know, we wouldn't have found it if you didn't tell us where it was. So hmm. good hiding spot. It is a good hiding spot. And who, who got you, the Americans or the Canadians? The Americans. The Canadians don't give a shit. Yes. <laughs> That's one great thing about Canada. They don't give a shit. One person who also doesn't give a shit is Connor McDavid or Connor McGregor. Connor McDavid doesn't either, but uh, he's Canadian. Connor McGregor, he's going to get his ass kicked in a, a couple weeks by Floyd Mayweather. But he is really pissed off that people think he's not going to win. So show his suit from a far point. So from a far distance, it just looks like a normal, like, uh, like a pinstripe suit, okay? But then you get closer. Look closer, and actually, it, this kind of makes me like Conor McGregor a little bit more. The pinstripes actually just say, fuck you. What do you think about that, Alex? Classy as shit. I like having a... Big I want a suit, suit made like that. A suit that just says "fuck you" on it. I like. I do like that. Where do you even get a custom suit like that? Well, you go to the custom suit shop and you say, "I want fabric made where it says fuck you," because then, okay, there has to be extra fabric because he's a small guy. So there has to be some. Find the extra fabric. What would you make out of your fuck? Would you make a fuck you suit or a fuck you? Maybe dress like a chair. A fuck you chair. Yeah. So like you you'd make it to. So where whenever I hate people, you have to sit in. The you chair. sit in the fuck you chair. Yeah. Like you'd sit there and you'd tell your boyfriend like he was doing something stupid. Yeah, like, like you sit in, in. That's your not. That's why I out. put my children when they're being bad. You sit in the fuck you chair. No, I want to sit in the fuck you chair. Yeah. See, that's why Alex is going to be an amazing mother. Yeah. Um, you wear contact lenses, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how to spell contact lenses? No, I don't. Um, did you hear about the woman over in England? She was about to have cataract surgery, so they oh, checked her eye. Oh, oh my eye. God! Yeah. 27 contacts they found in her eye. I don't know how you do that because when you put two contacts over each other, when you blink, they move out of place. So, like, you can tell that something's not right. So, I don't know how she possibly had that happen and she was still able to see it all. Well, that's what they were surprised with as well. 20, I was about to, because I've never had Maybe contacts. Maybe she doesn't actually have cataracts. She just has 27 lenses in her eye. Can you imagine if that was just the issue? Yeah. Like they like, oh, you're about to go blind. You're like, no, I'm going to go blind. It's like, no, you're just a complete moron. I don't know how she did that. Do you think her eyes were like out to like five feet in front of her? How did that happen? No. Why didn't she have better vision? I don't know how you even do that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how you would still blink. I don't know how people put in contact that lenses. That sounds very painful. How long have you had contact lenses? Since I was 12. And who taught you how to put them in? Like the doctor? The eye doctor, yeah. I, every time I see someone I don't do in... it how they tell me to, though. Oh, okay. You're supposed to, like, look straight into a mirror and, like, look at your eye putting it in. But, like, I don't I don't. How do, do you? How does the, what look, is the Alex Clemens method? I look up and I put it in my eye. See, I could never do that. 
It's I, not hard. I don't know how to do it. Well, I could never do it. You don't have to because you have a good vision because you're a poo hole. Mm, that's what happens when you're a poo hole. They give you excellent vision. God takes some things away and gives you other things. Um, this I thought was really, really silly. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh has been banned in China. No, come and, on. And the reason why is because people have started to compare him with the premier of China. So show the picture of Winnie the Pooh and the premier of China, which I wrote down his name, but I'm not going to say it because it would probably insult people because I would mispronounce it. But there's the premier of China and Winnie the Pooh. Do you see the resemblance? No, maybe in their mouth. Okay. But again, because of this, maybe and because the of the oppressive regime, no more Winnie the Pooh in China. And they love bears. Oh, wow. They have like pandas and stuff. They love bears. So, no more Winnie the Poohs. Okay, moving on. Leo DiCaprio. Okay? I think this is awesome. He's 42 years old. Guy is living maybe the greatest life in the history of lives. He had a bunch of hot models over to his house trying to pick who's the next one he's going to have sex with. And he starts bragging about how he doesn't care what his body is. He sits there and goes, I don't work out and I still get laid. And all the models were kind of being snooty and being like, oh, your body isn't that good. But personally, this is a fact that I love. For the last 20 years, Leo DiCaprio has not dated a woman over 25 years old. He is currently 42 years old. His last model girlfriend was like, you know, like 23 years old. And he still is rocking the dad bod. So, Alex, I, took a, I have the picture of Leo DiCaprio. Give me a give me a give me a, a a review of Leo's dad bod. See, I don't think that it's that bad of a dad bod. Like you can definitely tell that he has like a little beer gut and stuff, but he still has like muscular arms. I look at the legs. I still say yes. The legs, he clearly has never ever ever ran or gotten under a squat rack cuz his legs like his you can tell his thighs just go straight up. There's no definition, no hamstrings, no anything like that. I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? So yeah. basically, that, he takes his shirt off. You see the beer gut just pulling him. You're like, let's rock. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So you wouldn't be... Okay, let's say you're with those models. They're like, oh, my God. He's not... not, God. I'm not what would you say to those models? I'd punch them. Punch them in the face. That's why Alex Clemens, eventually, you're, you're going to be the first wife of Leo DiCaprio and the second wife of Bryce Harper. Yes. I am giving you your life moving forward. Final. As we are on social media, it's important to keep up with social media. Do you know how much Selena Gomez makes for every picture she puts on social media? No. $480,000. That's a lot. Number two, Kim Kardashian. $436,000. And number three, Cristiano Ronaldo. $350,000. By the way, just to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes. When I was picking the pictures that I was going to send, I found Selena Gomez... Then I found the one with Kim Kardashian as a bikini. And then I found one with uh, Cristiano Ronaldo just playing soccer. And I sat there and went, you know what? It's the anniversary special. Let's give Alex a little something. His body kind of looks like a monster, though. You're saying too well-defined. Yeah. So if that, okay, between that and Leo's, which is the better body? Uh, I like Leo's better. I think in terms of pure sexual like power, I'm saying Leo's body is built for fucking. That's just how I'm going. Yeah. That, that one's good for looking. That one's for show. Leo's is for dough. Yes. That's how I would put it. But to re one more question. Eight of the top ten highest paid Instagram posters all women. Why do you think that is? Because they're prettier. That is why she is producer extraordinaire. That's why we've had one year of shows on the River's Edge. Thank you very much again to Brian Crawford. Thank you very much to the River's Edge. We put together a little video we're going to post after the show. You can watch that on Facebook. Uh, again, thank you very much. Comment away. And again, if you have any good ideas for what we're going to do for the next year, We'll take them. We'll give you credit for them. If you have any ideas, any bands, anything like that, we're going to be out and about. So it's going to be a great second year. And if you want to say hi to us in person this Saturday, 
okay? July 22nd, me and Alex are going to be outside of Mr. Small's Theater right before the big 10,000 Maniac show. Yeah. We're going to be hosting a big get-together, yeah. raising money for the Millville Music Festival. Yeah. So it's going to be amazing. Hey, go hang out with the Godfather himself at the Indie Rock Fest at Cativo this Saturday as well. Keep listening to The River's Edge at www.riversedgepgh.com. Amazing local music, amazing local talk shows, incredible studio, incredible everything. This is an incredible show. Thank you very much. Thank you to Alex, the greatest producer in the history of the world. To another year of shows, I'm Mike Sasson. See you later. Bye. on your calendars the internet has reached a new low hello my name is mike sasson you have stumbled upon the mike sasson show if you're watching us live how you guys doing if you're listening to us in the future just so you know it is 10 a.m on july 19th 2016 so everything we're going to say could change by then but who knows what's going to happen again my name's mike sasson that is my producer alex clemens hi so we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be on for the next hour. When I started this thing uh, and started talking about doing this show, like everybody else, I was like, oh, let's, let's, let's have the theme be like, you know, Led Zeppelin or, you know, Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> or Van Halen. And he just quietly said, uh, Mike, um, that would be a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy the rights to that. And I'm just like, mm, we don't have that kind of money. And he goes, no, not, not really. that everything I've been through got me to this point because that's what this show is. That's why I wanted to name it the Mike Sasson Show. People have been asking me exactly what is this show going to be. What this show is going to be is a large man sweating because that's what this room is. It's a heat box. So by about minute 45, you're going to see a very angry, sweaty man. I thought we had fireworks today. Well, I did just drink coffee, so there's a possibility <laughs> that something might be coming out later on. You'll get to know me more and more, and you'll just get to know that, you know, I, I hope I'm five things to you. First and foremost, this show is going to be funny. I want it to be funny. I want you to smile. Two, it's going to be smart. Three, it's going to be direct. Four, it's going to be honest. And number five, I'll tell you right now, it's going to have a lot of energy. All right, because if you've seen me live, I've just drank some coffee. It's going to have some energy. Energy to it. or loudness? I don't, under I don't understand the difference between <laughs> either one. Now, Alex, what... It, what made you want to get into into broadcasting? Is there anything in particular that wanted you get wanted you get into broadcasting? I was on the video announcements, and my teacher told me that I should do broadcasting. That That's was it. it. That's <laughs> it. I was like, oh, I'm this like a tiny bit good at something in high school. I guess that's what I'll do for the rest of my life. And, oh my God. and the, you know, and Sasquatch. That's, yeah. that's what happens there.